So now we come to the process of making predictions. Going from our data and our trends, we start making predictions about what may occur into the future. Now, we're going to frame this looking at three research studies that are being conducted and continue to be conducted into various aspects of education and educational technologies. Now, the first is the driving K-12 um, innovation studies. So, in this study, they used a process called the Delphi Technique. In fact, all three of these studies used the process of the Delphi Technique, gathering together groups of experts to make um, informed decisions and come up with a consensus on what may occur around various issues. In this case, what may occur around educational technology. Now, you will be doing a similar Delphi study in the next module when we look at that approach. For now, though, you're going to be drawing upon data and trends that you can draw from that data to make your predictions. Nevertheless, these studies can give you a wealth of ideas around which to explore what data exists and to make your own predictions and develop your scenarios based on those predictions. So in this first study, they looked at three main aspects. The first were hurdles. These were impediments to education um, related to educational technology. And so there were a whole range of different um, hurdles considered and the consensus derived by the expert study, the Delphi process, um, identified three key hurdles that were going to be um, most significant, oh, sorry, five key hurdles. And they were scaling and sustaining innovation, um, data privacy and ownership, the evolution of teaching and learning, uh, pedagogy versus the technology gap, <laughs> digital equity, and they've snuck another one in there, the future of work. So these were considered the main um, impediments for education in the next five years, well, from 2020. Now, I chose 2020 because that was based on what was occurring um, from a study in 2019, pre-pandemic. Uh, the pandemic made everything a little bit messy in terms of these predictions. And as we emerge from the pandemic, things are now starting to get back in train. But this gives you a better idea of what the educational landscape was like and will probably be like going into the future. Of course, we have new technologies and new disruptions, such as generative text, but they will be incorporated into these studies going into the future. And you can incorporate those into your own scenarios. But these were the five identified at that time. So from this, they then also identified what are called accelerators. These were a range of different issues that were likely to promote change and innovation in education. So things like immersive learning and learner autonomy, uh, personalization, um, open educational resources, various um, initiatives and aspects of education and educational technology that were positive. And again, the experts in the study identified um, five key ones and described six here, but they were personalization, social and emotional learning, data-driven practices, building the human capacity of leaders and learners as creators. These were seen as the main issues and trends shaping education to the positive. And then finally, the study identified a range of technology enablers. Now, these were the actual technologies that enabled the hurdles and the accelerators. So these were things such as um, blockchain technologies, um, gamification, extended reality, virtual reality, things of that nature. And the study identified five key technologies that were likely to have the biggest effect over the 
uh, for coming five years, and they were digital collaboration platforms, how students and staff and others can collaborate and work together, um, tools for privacy and safety online, um, analytics and adaptive technologies, uh, cloud infrastructure, and mobile devices. So these were seen as the five key areas that were going to have the biggest technological impact upon K-12 education over the five years. So think about your own experiences and your where you see technology going in terms of the technology enablers, the technologies themselves, the hurdles that need to be overcome, and the um, aspects around technology that are framed as accelerators, things that will advance where you want to see your scenario progress. So in terms of your scenario structuring, the accelerators will trend towards where you see your future scenario progressing. The hurdles will tend to inhibit it and the technology enablers will be supportive of what occurs. Okay, so that's one approach and one study around K-12, what's happening in schools. The next study, the EDUCORS um, Horizon Reports, looked at what was occurring in higher education. So this was a little bit different. And again, they identified a range of issues. So in this case, on two levels. The first was social, technological, economic, and higher education as being the key sort of overarching trends occurring in higher education. And with that, there was also political um, trending. So there were various issues around ec economics, um, less money, uh, particularly in the United States, the cost of education was increasing dramatically and there were fewer and fewer students being able to afford that. Um, but there were lots of social issues as well around equitable access to higher education, um, demographic changes in terms of um, different populations and ages of students, and well-being and mental health of students becoming an increasing issue. In Australia, we've had issues around increasing number of students needing to work while also attending um, their studies. So there are lots of these overarching trends. And then there are also the technological trends. Now, these are the emerging technologies and practices that impact on um, higher education in this case. And the five ones that were identified, six, uh, were adaptive learning technologies, AI and machine learning, analytics for student success, so collecting data on students and trying to help identify where they needed additional assistance and so forth, um, the elevation of instructional design, learning engineering, and user experience design into pedagogy. So essentially, um, learning designers being involved with academics to improve the teaching process in higher education. Um, open educational resources, particularly in third world countries where having access to free educational materials was having a major impact. And then the emergence of extended reality, artificial um, augmented reality, um, virtual reality, virtual worlds, technologies of that sort being introduced into higher education. Now that was a big agenda just prior to the pandemic. Now because they were face-to-face -face technologies, um, they've been put on hold for the last few years, but are now starting to again re-emerge as major issues in um, higher education. So if your scenario is focused on higher education, you may want to consider some of those particular aspects that you can incorporate into your own future study. Now, from that, the study identified four types of scenarios. So there were the growth scenarios where things were uh, continuing to improve. There were the constraint scenarios where things um, had some constriction and didn't necessarily improve. And there were the collapse scenarios where things fell apart 
and um, things got worse and worse. And there was transformation scenarios where the nature of higher education would transform to adapt to new circumstances and technologies and these various issues that were confronting higher education. So again, in your own scenario planning, think about what sort of scenario is yours going to be? Is it going to be one of growth? Is it going to be one of constraint? Is it going to be one of transformation? Or is it going to be a dystopian collapse? You do need to base your scenarios on trends. So you need to look at the data and what the data is informing you as what may occur. But within that, you've got a reasonable degree of flexibility in framing what could occur out into the five-year time frame. Then you need again to think about the implications. If those different types of scenarios come to pass, what may happen to education? What may happen to society? So in your own scenarios, you need to think about those implications, particularly as they relate to learning. Now, the third scenario takes a somewhat different approach. This is set again in K to 12, but in an Australian context. And what differentiates it from the other studies is that it looks at things from different um, stakeholder perspectives. What do students see happening in the next five years? What do teachers see happening? What do school administrators see happening? What do sector administrators? Uh, what does the government or parents each have a different perspective on what may occur with the future of education and educational technologies. And by looking at those, we can get some interesting insights into what could occur because each of those different stakeholders have got different levels of influence. Just because teachers want something to occur doesn't necessarily mean they have the power to make that occur. Educational leaders, educational system administrators are more likely to be able to influence things. But that said, parents and students can sometimes have um, dramatic levels of influence, depending upon the political situation at the time. And so that may drive change and directions around your scenarios. So think about the key influences that have a say in what may be occurring in your scenarios. And that may help also help guide you in determining what occurs in your scenarios.